Hi, it's Kara, and today we are doing my April wrap up and May TBR. So I read 17 things this month. I say things, obviously I don't read all physical books. I think I read seven, read seven books for my physical TBR, quite a lot of uh, graphic novels, um, some audiobooks, and let's get started. First off this month, I read One Dark Throne by Kendare Blake. This is book two in the Three Dark Crown series. Uh, this is a series following these three young queens, they're triplets, and they have to essentially kill each other to get the throne. I don't know how better to describe this, but I love this series. I really enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed this second one even better. I gave this like a solid 4.5 stars, I believe, from memory, but it was like a month ago. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this. I would definitely recommend this series and the third one comes out later in the year and I'm very excited about that. Then I read The Price Guide to the Occult by Leslie Walton which is beautiful. I believe I have a review up for this though I can't remember for sure. I think I do maybe. This is a um, young adult magical realism but very magic. Um, kind of story following our main character, Nor, who's comes from this long line of witches. They're all just women and they're all just witches. Um, they all have these individual powers which are descended, descended from their like great 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 grandmother. They all inherit one of her powers kind of thing. Um, and her mom is really awful and got really awful powers and she's an awful person and Nor's trying to deal with that and with her place in their community and they're living on this remote tiny island and the town kind of knows them but just lives with them and I don't know it's beautiful I don't really know how to describe it but it's a gorgeous piece of work I've heard some people say they didn't weren't such a big fan of this but I personally absolutely adored it I got five stars. It was beautiful, heartbreaking, um, really confronting, and just gorgeous. I loved it. Though there is probably a trigger warning for self harm on this book. Then I finished the audiobook for Clockwork Angel. I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed in this. Um, obviously, I love Clockwork Angel as a book, but the audiobook narration just. Mm, no, no, no. I didn't like her from the very get-go. Obviously, I just don't like her voice, that's all. Um, I have know nothing about her as a person. But her voice irritated me from moment one. Um, I had this on iTunes and it, the formatting was strange, so I couldn't do like two times speed or anything. I just had to listen to it for its full length. And every time she was doing the voices, they came out really wrong to me. And I just, I was not a fan at all of the narration of this. I suffered through it because I'm doing a Shadowhunters reread on audio. So I had to suffer through, but it was suffering. Boy, was it suffering. The audiobook, I would give like a two out of five for this. Then I read A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. This is book one in the Gemma Doyle trilogy and follows Gemma, whose mother has recently died and she's starting to see visions and things. She's... It's the 1800s, yep, late 1800s. She's at this boarding school, like elite boarding school for girls. And it's just, I gave this like a three stars, but it's like really like a 2.5. It's like smack bang in the middle. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I think my problem with this was that a lot of the time it was just these girls having very childish problems. And they're like, she falls in with the bullies and that's never really dealt with. Like, they're still bullies. <laughs> She's just friends with them. Um, and yeah, it's really complicated. Uh, my feelings for it, I mean, are very complicated. Um, I do already own book three of this, but I don't own book two. So I think my current plan is I won't go out seeking book two, which I, was what I was going to do if I really enjoyed this. But if book two happens to fall in my lap, I'll read it and carry on to book three. But do let me know if anyone knows if this series like dramatically picks up from here and a lot of the faults in this first one are dealt with. Because I love Libra Bray, like I love the Diviner series, but this was really fallen flat for me. Then I read The Son of the Dawn by Cassandra Clare. This is the first in the new 
series of novellas. So you will see one of these like every month for the next little while. This, um, I think the series is Ghost of the Shadow Market, I believe, and uh, kind of follows Jem through the, as the like character that's consistent throughout the stories. This one followed um, when Jace first meets Alec and Isabel as he's coming to New York and it was so cute. I really enjoyed it, but obviously it's a novella, so like normal problems with novellas, I give it like three stars. Then I read The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. I already have a review up for this. I loved this, it was gorgeous. Um, it is a uh, young adult contemporary following a main character, Lee, whose mother dies of suicide, and she's seeing her in these visions as a large red bird that she thinks is visiting her that her mother's changed into. This is just the saddest, most beautiful story I've read in a long time. I believe its own voice is Taiwanese. Um, Lee's half Taiwanese, half American. And I just, this was beautiful. I 100% recommend it. Solid five stars. Then another one I already have a review up for. I read Circe by Madeline Miller. This is uh, the second book by Madeline Miller that's like uh, mythical retellings from Greek mythology. This obviously follows Circe, who is um, the daughter of Helios the sun god, and she's a witch, not just a god. And I loved this. Such lady power, such like exploration of the gods and stuff. Obviously, I have a review of this up already. Five stars. I think the only thing that I think I actually gave it 4.5. Because the one thing that let me down was kind of the pacing towards the end kind of fell off rather than peaking. But throughout I loved it. And it felt slow. It just kind of went like this rather than going like this. So, you know, it was good. It was good. Then another thing which I think suffered from a few pacing issues was The Warrior, Warrior Air by Cindy Williams Trimer. This is the first in the Air Chronicles. Um, and this follows our main character. What's his name? Jack who discovers that he's part of this like secret society of wizards and like warriors and sorcerers and enchanters and it's complicated but you know fantasy world um I have this whole series already in my house um I did actually really enjoy it but I think it was just a bit slow and the the energy kind of came in bursts throughout um, I'm definitely keen to keep reading this series and pick up her other series, the Shattered, no, Seven Realms series. Definitely keen for that. But, um, and I will be reading the rest of the series. Just, I think it was a solid, like, 3.5, 4 stars. Not anything magic, like, super special. I was going to say magical, but obviously it's magical. It's fantasy. Then I read Monstrous Volume 2 by... Oh god, I can't remember. It'll be on the cover here. I have to take this back to the library so I don't have it with me. This is uh, obviously volume two of a graphic novel series. Um, and I actually really enjoyed this. I think compared to volume one, it had a bit more flow of narration and I understood a little bit more of what was going on. I, my main fault with volume one was that I was so confused. This one was much stronger on that front. Um, I think I gave it a four stars overall. This world is really interesting. It's kind of like steampunky, but it has this race that are like animal, like um, anthropomorphic animals. This other race that are just, they're like the evil race that just look human and are just, it's complicated. And I don't really understand, but I think volume two helped me understand a little better. But the artwork in this and the action is beautiful. Then I read That Inevitable Victorian Thing by E.K. Johnston. I read this on audiobook because I discovered Borrowbox. I don't know if you can give this outside of Australia, but Borrowbox is the new um, audio and ebook subscription service for libraries. Um, so if you are part of a library in Australia, you can access it if your library has access to Borrowbox. Um, and it's run by Belinda, which are like the biggest audiobook people in Australia. I don't know how far their reach is, that's all. Um, and this has such a great range of young adult books on there at the moment, on my library's borrow box. Um, so many stuff I want to read. I'm sure I'll run out quite quickly, but all the other ones, like I've used uh, Libby and there's another one as well, but all the audiobooks are just stuff I'm not that interested in. So 
Yes, I was very excited to see this on there. This, I have also requested some other stuff to pop up. So I'm very keen for that. So I read this, this is about, this is a like um, near future speculative science fiction kind of thing. Um, following this world in which uh, Queen Victoria instead of, I don't know what instead of, but she marries her kids out across the empire so the empire got solidified um america is still america and their own thing but the british empire is still very much the british empire in this story and there's a strong focus on genetics and like genetics in in the same places with religion it's a very interesting world but what i loved about this story not only was the audiobook narration great the narrator did it in received pronunciation like the very proper british sounding like news reader kind of thing so good um it followed it also is like the best for representation follows two girls um margaret who is victoria margaret the crown princess who's next in line for the throne and helena whose mother is like a genetic counselor kind of thing but a very famous recognized one and they end up having their season together, but the princess is undercover, so no one knows she's the princess. Um, they go to have their debut debut ball kind of thing in Toronto. 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 <laughs> um, and um, we also follow Helena's uh, kind of like boyfriend beau, but obviously there's always like older school Pride and Prejudice style notions of marriage and things that are kind of imposed onto this modern society. It's very strange. Kind of reads like a Pride and Prejudice kind of novel. It's great. Um, and she, Helena finds out that she's intersex. And also there's like, she's falling in love with Margaret. And oh, so we have lesbian romance, intersex main character, um, and kind of a polyamorous couple at the end through like a like a one side of the triangle is platonic but still there's the three of them in the end it's i probably gave away so many spoilers then i apologize i'll try and remember to put on the spoiler warning but um oh my god it's so good you want queer representation this is the book you want in like a pride and prejudice style story like it's that kind of like kind of fluffy romantic thing but with this strong genetic empiristic thing but also the author's taken a really good care to consider how the ways she's changed the world would impact on different cultures and things it's really thoughtful i really enjoyed it really enjoyed it for something that overall is kind of i i don't even know it was great then on the realm of queer fiction i read sugar town by hazel newlevant this is a tiny queer graphic novel following um hazel and what's the other story uh, other story other girl's name um her working name is hazel that's not her actual name argent and both hazel and argent are polyamorous and mm, ladies after my own heart love it great this is so cute and kind of, although it's tiny, looked into the like the dynamics of polyamorous relationships and it's just really fun. If anyone ever wants to know like what it feels like to be poly, I think this is a good representation, at least in my opinion. So, you know, I loved this. Then after a long while, I finished The Odyssey by Homer. So now this whole bind up is done. I read the Iliad in like January. And now I finished the Odyssey as well. I really enjoyed the Odyssey. I think I enjoyed it more than the Iliad. Um, but still, Homer's writing is very campfirey and slow. So, you know, it's a poem. You just got to roll with it. But anyway, I enjoyed this. I'm glad I read it. I gave it like a three stars. Then I read Now I Rise by Kirsten White, which is book two to the Conqueror Saga. Book three comes out in June. I'm very excited. Um, these are a Vlad the Impaler retelling if Vlad was a woman. And I just, mmm, mmm, mmm. This series is so good. I totally recommend it. I had been putting it off for ages. Um, I'd owned the first one for a long time since like 
it came out and I'd had it sitting on my shelf for a long time and then in January I decided to read it and now I've read book two and I love them so much. Um, they're great. Read them. Queer rep but kind of like sad queer rep. Yes and feminism and greatness. It was blocked by BuzzFeed. Required reading for every feminist fantasy fan. It's not fantasy but you know I guess it kind of reads like a fantasy. It's very much historical fiction but like gory battles and because you know it's the, the Ottomans invading Constantinople and stuff at least in this one so you know not actually fantasy historical fiction. Then I read The Complete Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi. This is oh I've been forgetting to tell you what I did for what thing for the readathon. Oh if you want to know what books I read for what for the readathon check out my week four reading vlog which I broke it down at the end and said I would hold things up in this video. I've held them all up I just haven't told you what challenges they were for. I can't be bothered now so unfortunately you're not going to get that but um but for the magical readathon I read The Complete Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. This is a graphic memoir black and white it's really gorgeous um following Marjane as she grew up in Iran and then moved to Europe. It's just beautiful. Really enjoyed this. I think I gave it four stars. Then I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a novel told in verse following our main character Siamara who is um, a Dominican American and dealing with very Catholic parents. Um, I think her mom wanted to be a nun. Very Catholic. Um, she has a gay twin. Uh, that's not going down well if you could imagine. And she's not meant to date anything, nothing. Very Christian, very Catholic. And she's fully in love with this boy and writing poetry and she's questioning her religious beliefs. Um, and I really enjoyed this. This was really, really good. I gave it 4.5 stars. It's totally in verse. Poetry is amazing. I made the mistake of reading the one poem all in Spanish and translating it on Google Translate, turned the page and the translation was right there. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't turn the page. But oh well. So this was really great. I really enjoyed it. And finally this month I read volumes two and three of Giant Days by Allison, John Allison and other people. The other people change. Um, these are slice of life stories about these three girls who are in college in Britain um, and it's just so good. I really enjoy these. Um, I have heard criticism that they don't have like a strong arc. That's 100% true. Each chapter, so these have like four chapters in each bind up. Each chapter is kind of like its own little college adventure and then it kind of leads into the next little college adventure but they're very distinct little stories. So I would 100% agree this doesn't have a strong arc, but I don't really care. I love it anyway. It's adorable. It's great. Love it. We'll keep reading this series. I have volumes four, five, and seven sitting on my bedside table. I'm waiting for six to come into the library. So those are all the books I read in the month of April. Now let's quickly run through what I plan on reading in May. Two books that I don't have physically yet. First off we have A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah Jane Bass. Oh actually like three books I haven't got yet. Three books I haven't got yet. So A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah Jane Bass. This is book 3.5 that bridges the gap between the original trilogy, The Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy and the new trilogy. I don't really know what's going on there. I I have so many problems with Sarah J Maas but she writes these characters that I'm so invested in that I just can't not read them. It's a problem. I'm going to be reading this. Plus it's a novella unlike Tower of Dawn which was meant to be a novella and then wasn't. It actually is a novella. Very excited. Should be quick. Great. I then also really 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 want to read I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. This is Alice Oseman's third novel and follows Angel and Jimmy and Angel is the biggest fan of this band called The Ark and Jimmy is the lead singer of The Ark. 
Jimmy is also trans, so we have Rep there. Fabulous. Um, and I just love Alice Oseman's stories all the time. Also, I think Angel wears the hijab, is Muslim. So, I'm so excited. I love Alice Oseman, and I've been waiting for this for a long time. And then the one other book I don't physically have with me is The Queens of Innes Leah by Tessa Grattan. I'm going to be picking this up tomorrow, hopefully, if I get time to go to the bookstore. Um, this is an adult fantasy retelling of King Lear, I believe. Though I don't know that much about it. There's these three queens and they're rivals for the throne or something like that. Kind of giving me Three Duck Crowns vibes, but in like a bigger high fantasy um, adult world. So I'm very excited. Plus I love Tessa Grattan. I've read a lot of her short works and I'm a big fan. So yes. Now let's go to the books I physically own. We're going to run through these super fast. If you want any more details about any of them, uh, I will direct you to my book haul. Because almost all of these are from my most recent book haul. There are a few other ones. I'll mention those in a bit more detail. But do let me know down below if there's anything more you want to know about any of these. But I'm going to try to run through them fast. I'm going to be reading Queens of Fenburn by Kendera Blake. This is the two novellas in the Three Duck Crown series that just came out or is just coming out. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm so keen. Again, really short. A theme for this month is short books. I was very ambitious last month. I have a similar kind of amount of books on my TBR this month, but quite a few of them are very short. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. That's not even on the cover. It's on the side. Um, I have this on request on audiobook from my library. I originally wasn't going to be planning on reading this, but I've heard the audiobook's amazing and I found it on Box, and I've requested it. So when it comes in, I'll read it. <laughs> Solace by Kale Garriger. This is Gail Kale Garriger. Gail Garriger. This is book one in the um, Alexa Tarabotti um, Parasol Protectorate series. I own books one, three, and five. Once I've read this, I'll buy book two. I am so excited for this series. This is steampunk fantasy, and I am all about that life. All about. All of that, I'm so excited. And again, this is a shorty. This is like under 300 pages. Yeah, just under 300 pages. So another shorty. Then we have The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This is book two in the Broken Earth trilogy. I read the fifth season uh, in March and loved it. And I'm so excited to read this. Like you do not understand how excited this makes me. And I'll probably be reading the third book in the next couple of months because this series is so good. This is um like speculative science fiction fantasy futuristic it's it's complicated it's a complicated world i don't want to spoil anything i'm so excited to read this six of crows by lee bardugo this is obviously the first in the sequel duology to the grisha trilogy which i just have up here out of your view um i finished the grisha trilogy last month and so not not april i finished it in march and I was very happy about that fact because I've been so desperate to read Six of Crows for a long time, but didn't want to read it till I'd finished the Grisha Trilogy. So I finished the Grisha Trilogy and now I can read Six of Crows. So I'm excited. This is a heist story in the Grishaverse, which has like Russian inspired magic. And I'm just, mm -hmm. Then we have Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. This is the sequel to Red Rising, another book I read couple of months back. Oh, it's having some cover peelage. Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, wow. Um, just like the, the plastic coating is coming off. Um, this is a science fiction story, but kind of like Hunger Games, but not at all like Hunger Games. I don't know how to describe it. I just don't. The first one was amazing. Action, great. Loved it. This one apparently is even better and this series just keeps going and going and going and tears your heart out. I'm very keen. <laughs> then we have another short one and that is The Thief by Megan Wallen Turner, which is book one in a series. The Queen's Thief series. I bought this because I saw Regan from Peru's Project read it and rave about it. And Regan just speaks to me. 
and I buy things. So I bought this like earlier in the year and it's short and I just, I think I'll breeze through it and I'm gonna love it and I'm so excited. Another short one, so yeah. Then on the stack we have the book I'm currently reading, which is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. This is a young adult fantasy. Kind of on the same line as Six, and Cro uh, Six of Crows with heists. Uh, it's a casino city. I'm already enjoying it. I'm gonna keep reading this. It's really good. Then we have The Falconer by Elizabeth May. Um, it's Scottish fae, fae slayer. I'm, yeah. Yes. We have The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green, which is a medieval fantasy um, of the same kind of feeling of Game of Thrones and those kind of things with the multiple perspectives, cast storytelling. Very excited for this. I've heard mixed things, but I'm very keen to read it myself. It's It releases in May, but I got it early, so yay! And finally for my TBR we have Fury Born by Claire Legrand, which is book one of the Imperium Trilogy, another high fantasy young adult um, following two timelines of women who have a big impact on their world and that's about all I know. I'm so excited. Can you tell how excited I am about like all the books on my TBR this month? Just so excited. I'm excited that I'm getting new glasses. Just like a side point, I'm getting new glasses. I'm excited for that too. So that is my super long wrap up and, and TBR. Um, again, I'm a little bit ambitious with May for my TBR, but a lot of the books are shorter. Oh, I'll also be reading a Shakespeare play. That's my classic for the month. I'll be reading Two Gentlemen of Verona. I know nothing about that, but we're gonna read it. Um, and I'll be reading the next Cassandra Clare novella, Cast Long Shadows, I think it's called. But yes, so that is my TBR. Lots of short things. Some of them carries over from April, so some may then carry on over into June. I don't know. We'll see how I go. I'm confident at the moment. I'll be less confident by week two. Surely. <laughs> okay, anyway, I should go get reading. Comment down below if you've read any of the books I read last month and want to chat about them. Let me know if you've read any of the books I'm planning to read and hype them up for me. Otherwise, I will see you next time in a few days with another video. Okay, I'm hyper tonight. Can you tell? Bye!